I think the first question as such is something that happened in recent time. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows about Section 377 being decriminalized. Yeah. And um, I think most of the youth, everyone, uh, me, I think most of us would have gone back home. We are very happy about this. And we talk to our parents and people from the like, you know, older generation. Right? So uh, this is something that I do with my parents on a regular basis. We sit and we discuss a lot of topics. So this is something that happened to me and something that I've heard from a lot of people as well. So when we discuss something like this with our older generation, they said, we are not going to debate with you as such. We're not going to impose our perspectives on you. But this is not accepted in our religion. Right? So when I took a step back and I thought how difficult it would be for kids, for youth from the LGBT community to come out to their parents and at the same time when the parents pose this restriction that it is not accepted in our religion, how does a child and how does a parent deal with it? And sometimes a parent does cut off from their child as well. So just want to know your perspective on you know, the LGBT community or homosexuality as such with religion and at the same time how a parent and a child should deal with it because I think a relationship between a parent and child is so important, right? And to lose something on that lines is not something. See, uh, probably till now, largely in the social space, in the media space, in the social media space, everybody is pitching either for or against. Can we for some time not pitch for or against and simply look at the issue as it is, can we? Look at me, I'm not a prude, okay? Let that be clear <laughs> So, when we say sexuality, let's understand this. It is something nature has put in us because there is something called as perpetuation of the race or the species, otherwise it won't happen. Of course, we being human beings, having more brains than body, supposed to, uh, because of that, we kind of eliminated the reproductive part and just using the pleasure part of it, all right? This is sexuality right now, largely in the world. But essentially, this pleasure also is come into the sexuality process because otherwise, well, if there was no pleasure to it, maybe uh, we wouldn't be born, you and me. Our present parents would not have gone into it if there was no pleasure at all attached. Yes or no? So we are here because of that. So there is no denying it or putting it under the carpet, that's not the thing. But somebody has a certain kind of sexual preference, which has got nothing to do with reproductive process as such, it is their personal preference because every individual has the right to do whatever the hell they want to do with their body because it's their body. But if it is something harmful, you're going to cut your nose off or you're going to cut something else off, then maybe we will try to prevent you. But you're not causing any harm to yourself in that way then it's your business as long as you do something in your private. Right now, the Supreme Court decision is just that, that what a person does in their private space is nobody's business. Government need not enter people's bedrooms, that is the law, all right? And I think it's right. But at the same time, why so many of you are upset about it or for it or against it is simply because there has been a campaign around the world. I'm saying the campaign should stop. There may be a few people who are oriented that way, leave them alone, it's their business, all right? Even if you're a heterosexual, you don't go about talking it on the street. Hello? You don't, isn't it? Because private matters must be handled that way unless you give some sanctity to this body. Please understand this. The fundamental difference between animal nature and human nature is this, we are doing the same things that they do. They are living, they go around, they reproduce, they die. We also do the same thing. We think a lot about it and we make a whole lot of fuss about it, but we are doing the same thing. Only difference is 
we can do all these things of eating, sleeping, reproducing, everything more consciously. Because of that, we hold ourselves little different from the other creatures. Otherwise, what's the big difference? You may think there's a difference, other animals are looking at you and thinking, what about you? Isn't it? So, this is the fundamental process. Now, individual people have some choices. I don't think it needs to become a national or international issue, it's their business, what they're doing. But at the same time, there is no need to campaign for it or against it. There's no need to campaign against it, there is no need to campaign for it. If you allow nature to take its course, the percentage of people who will fall that way are extremely saw, small. But because of a whole campaign going on in the world, the number of people entering that space has become bigger, much bigger than what it should be. Having said that, your parents being upset about it or not coming to terms with it, if they are doing it for religious reasons, well, there may be a lot of trash in every religion, there is. But there is also some wisdom gathered over the times in every religion, yes or no? So this wisdom, some people are calling it religion, some people are looking at it just sensibly and doing what they have to do, some people read religious texts and come to this wisdom because they're not able to figure it out themselves. So do you have to agree with all the things that they say in their religion? No. But do you have to simply blanket disagree with everything? That'll be foolish. Because human experience cannot be thrown away, isn't it? Thousands of years of human cultural experience cannot be just thrown away. We have to take what is sensible and what is not. So when it comes to this aspect, they know the consequence of this. See, when you're at this age, the most attractive word is freedom. Hello? Well, I come from the sixties. You know what sixties? <laughs> so, freedom is the word. In this… but since then I've looked at human mind in so many ways. The moment you utter the word freedom, people will end up doing freaky things. Because freedom is a consequence. It is not a thing that you do. See, freedom is not an act. Freedom is a consequence of how I experience my life. Freedom comes out of a responsible existence. If you think of the consequence without taking care of the process, you will always end up as a disaster. I must tell you this, well, at least twelve to fifteen of close friends that I had when I was growing up, they all died before they are thirty-five. Well, some of them, uh, you know, because we were living on motorcycles, they got killed in the mo on the motorcycles, rest drank themselves to death, others drug themselves to death, at least twelve to fourteen people who were very close to me, who were around me, all died before they're thirty-five because freedom. Do you understand? Freedom was the real thing. They became free, free and they became free <laughs> Death is definitely freedom. So, one thing that young people should learn is don't utter the word freedom because freedom is a consequence. It's something that you have to earn. It doesn't come as a philosophy. In sixties, we thought it's a philosophy. If you live responsibly, you will see freedom will come. When I say responsibly, not in the sense of civic responsibility. If you retain your ability to respond to life without any prejudice, without any restriction, you will see you will become free. Your ability to respond, if it is unlimited, it is freedom, isn't it? Now, coming to this religious resistance, there's nothing religious about this. Sexuality is a biological process, yes? The very fact that nature created opposites, it has some intention. Well, some people didn't take to natural ways, it's okay, it's their choice. 
we don't have to discriminate against them, we don't have to persecute them, we don't have to put them in the prison, definitely it's not necessary. But at the same time, it doesn't need promotion either. Now, when I say freedom and responsibility, this is like this. See, suppose uh, you want flowers in your garden. If you sit in your garden and every day do flower meditation, flowers will not come. If you want flowers, you don't have to even think about flowers. You must think soil, manure, water, sunlight. Soil doesn't feel like a flower, manure doesn't smell like a flower, water doesn't look like a flower, sunlight doesn't feel like a flower. But if you take care of these things, flowers will happen, isn't it? This is the way life works. So the important thing with our lives is this is a very westernized approach that we are looking at the goal. We want the product, we don't want the process. No, if you're devoted to the process, if you're truly devoted to the process that you're doing right now, you will naturally do your best. Everything that you have, result will come or no? Result will come or no? It'll come. Just because you sit here and desire the result, it's not going to come. You will only have plastic flowers in your head, flowers will not grow in your garden. So, this is a time of life, I'm surprised, uh, you know, like it's not just you, just about anywhere I go, young people are asking only this question. What this means is, they are trying to live too early. See, this is a time to grow, this is a time to enhance yourself, because your ability to enhance yourself and grow will not be the same after ten years, believe me. Your ability to learn will not be the same. Your ability to grow physically, emotionally, intellectually and in consciousness will not be the same after ten to fifteen years' time. So this is a time to grow. When it's time to grow, if you try to live too much, some life you want to taste, but if you try to live too much, you will see your growth will be impeded and your life will be stunted in so many different ways. So it's very important young people focus on growth. Because we are seeing this, you know, like I've traveled across the United States, many of these universities. It… it brings tears to me when I see how it is. I'm glad at least uh, in India most of the students are sober in the daytime <laughs> Really, I'm telling you, in top universities, daytime they're all gone. So we're becoming slaves of commerce. Because people have intentions to do their own thing, they're just enslaving the people, young people, because they want to sell their brand. Because it seems early age, if you get used to a certain kind of beer, that's what you're going to drink for the rest of your life. Yes, they have done research on this, universities have done researches on this, and they're supplying free beer in the school. Tell me, does it take a genius to understand this, that if I open a book which is of some complexity and I want to grasp this, if I'm intoxicated, can I grasp it? Hello? Is, is, does it take a genius to understand this, I'm asking? So, you don't have to… You, when your parents say something, they may refer to their religion because they think it's an authority. You take away the authority, just listen to the words. If it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't make sense, tell them politely, that's not the way it is with me, all right?